Hello, and welcome to AP Human Geography. A course I sometimes call AP Huge. In this course, you're going to learn a great deal about world history and geography. Let me briefly discuss the purpose of these first few videos. First, I will demonstrate some of the educational processes I utilize throughout the course, namely the flipped classroom approach in creating the video you're watching right now. Secondly, I will show you some effective note-taking procedures to help you retain the most important information the first time around. And finally, I will educate you on some of the essential map facts and cartographic skills that you will need throughout the year. Now bear in mind, Education is what other people do for you. Learning is what you do for yourself. So, with that in mind, let's begin. First off, I want all your note-taking to be done the old-fashioned way, with paper and pen, or pencil, not on your computer. There are a litany of reasons for this, and I will explain more in class, but for now, trust me, this is by far the best way to retain information for future use. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the Cornell note-taking method. Although I do not require you to take notes this way all year long, for the beginning unit, I expect you to do it this way. Start by drawing a line about one inch to the right of the red line on the paper, effectively dividing your paper into two columns. The larger column to the right is for note-taking. Now, when watching my videos, do not write everything I say word for word. This is a bad idea. First off, I wouldn't expect you to write everything I say in a class lecture. So, I don't expect you to write everything I say in a course video. Many students who type their notes end up acting like courtroom stenographers, dictating notes and not absorbing most of what they are typing. So, avoid this. Secondly, it will take you much longer to do this as opposed to writing less and focusing on the main ideas, important facts, and key details in your own shorthand. Furthermore, and perhaps most importantly, learning to think critically and conceptually is of paramount importance, and one of the main reasons you will often write notes on your own time. This is so we can use classroom time for more engaging and enriching lessons and experiences, but it also means that you need to take ownership of your own learning. I also recommend that you leave around four or five spaces at the bottom of each page. This makes it easy if you need to revise or add anything later, especially after class time. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Okay, almost done with this lesson on notes. Now for the left column. This side is much smaller, so you will not need to write very much. In fact, less is more. Here's what I suggest you do very soon after taking your notes, or certainly within 24 hours of taking your notes. The left column is for main ideas, core concepts, and key words. I advise that you include page numbers from the textbook if applicable. This will make your notes much more valuable and interactive when it comes time for studying for tests and exams. And very importantly, it is good to include relevant questions that match the information to the right. This way you can fold your paper over and quiz yourself at a later time. This also helps you synthesize the information in a very effective manner. You should use abbreviations and your own shorthand. You can also use symbols and multiple colors, especially if you're more of a visual learner. The point is to make note-taking more of a process, as opposed to simply just a task. Your brain learns much better when you chunk the information, and when you internalize the material in multiple ways. Also, don't forget that you're not only taking notes on the video, but also on any of the pages you're reading in your textbook, or any of the online readings. My advice is not to have two separate sets of notes, but combine them together. One last thing. I strongly advise that you watch an entire section of the video without pausing or stopping, then go back before you take your notes. This will help you hear the whole story or understand the big picture much better as opposed to starting and stopping repeatedly. Well, enough about note-taking instruction for now. Since there's no better way to learn than by doing, let's finally get into the lesson on maps. Enjoy! Look at the image that you have in front of you right here on your screen. And you might ask yourself this basic question, what's wrong with this map? At first glance, it looks like a lot. It looks as if basically the world is completely turned upside down. But if you take a closer look and we see this image down here, which we call in the geography world, a compass rose, which will show you north, south, east, and west. 
you notice that north is pointing down, so in reality, there's nothing wrong with this map. It is an upside down world map. Uh, just to give you an idea about how we are going to open up your eyes to a whole new world you've never seen before. The first section we're going to look at is under map analysis. In this case, I will introduce to you the very fine acronym Total SIG. You need to know it and you need to love it. Okay, the, uh, the love part might be a little bit strong, but let's get into it. T is for title. You can see very easy, Chicago and its interconnections. Very simple. Next thing you need to look at is O for orientation. Uh, since you do not see it here, I'm putting in the compass rose. That shows you where north is pointing. So north, south, east, and west. Very important. Okay, going on to D. D is for the date. Um, if this was going to be a historical investigation, you need to look at something in the past. Since we're looking at something more modern, 2008 meets the mold. A stands for author. In the look of any map, you need to try to determine, is this from a reliable source? In this case, the author is it's from your textbook, so it does fit very nicely. L is for legend. As you can see, the legend is right here in this box. The focus on this is to show you the centrality of Chicago, to show you the importance of Chicago. That's why it's done at the level that it is. Uh, just like the old saying, with all roads leading to Rome, you take a look here and you can see major highways, major railroads, all leading into Chicago, showing it great centrality. Going on to S for scale. This is also important as well. You can see right here at the bottom of the legend, and you've got your scale right here between 0 and 25 kilometers or 0 and 25 miles. It also shows you a good scale because you have four different states, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, giving you the idea of the importance that Chicago has. Index. Not all maps will have an index, but with all these different cities, if you were going to find Chicago, very easy. But if you want to find, let's say, DeKalb or Plymouth, it'd be difficult to do without an index. In this case as well, you can see a grid has been included also. In, in this scale, you can see it's actually the lines of latitude and longitude. You can see for latitude, you have 43 degrees, 42 degrees, 41. For longitude, you go from 90 to 89 and down. And here, you can just see where this is connecting you with those direct coordinates. So, total sig. Well, let's see how you did. Now, good note-taking is somewhat like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. If you don't know this reference, then you must have had a very deprived childhood. So, if your notes look like this... It's crap! Right, if you're doing this, then you're paying no attention to what I told you. There's way too much here, obviously. And then there's this... You kidding me? Yeah, I hope you understand way too little here. So, what would a good example look like? Well, here's a shot. Using the three bears analogy, this is just right. It has the title, it has a section, it is organized... It has the main idea to the left, coordinated with the page number in your reading as well. In fact, all the information to the right not only includes the information from the video, but also from the reading as well. Well, I certainly hope you learned something in this first video. And now, for a special message from the former President of the United States. Hey, I just met you. And this, this is crazy. But here's my number. So call me. Maybe. It's hard to look right at you, babe. But here's my number. So call me, maybe. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. But here's my number. So call me, maybe. And all the other boys try to chase me. But here's my number. So call me, maybe. Subscribe, and I'll love you back. Maybe.